Why is recorded in front of a live studio audience. Yeah, so I don't have a ton of time because the elder has decided that um, one of the birthday treats you get as a fourth grader is you get to have lunch in your classroom with your teacher and like a few friends. Oh, all right. Yeah, so I was like, all right, I'll just pack you lunch. And then yesterday, oh, um, we went Domino's and can you get it there by like yeah, 1, 120? I'm like, yes. oh, okay, let me just drop everything and work around that time. Yes. So. No, that's, well, I don't have a ton of time either because I have a fourth grader staying in my apartment that's going to right. wake up soon, so. Yeah, <laughs> be grouchy. And a puppy. So. Yeah, I'll, I'll take my fourth grader over your This is Why, with your hosts, Heidi Hedquist and Luke Poling. Let's right. talk about the newest country, I think it's a news country that really I need to see what we can do about getting uh, our citizenship here. Yeah. Slow Jamistan is, I mean, and of course they are, uh, I guess they count as this, the micro country, which I can't remember how many there are in the world. Obviously there's Sealand. Yes, our other friends. Uh, I guess I should say my commonwealth of sealand i know right you're like denying your yes and also with ability you. yes uh but so slow jamistan is based in um in i guess they are surrounded by california is how we should yes, say that's how you should say it yes uh their press release when the uh governor and governess of two other small micro nations uh met the president of slow jamistan and it's the first time that another president from a country has visited the country oh. uh they received the first key to the country very cool and their press release which is the best part under ten thousand slow jammy jamistani citizens neighbors and allies and onlookers flock to the republic we're not going to give you a number we're just going to say under um yeah. so yes yeah Right. I mean, I mean, they have some very fascinating rules. Th though, which which one's your favorite rule of them? Well, I mean, even though contrary to popular belief, because of my closet does have excessive pairs, but no Crocs are allowed in the country. Oh, I missed that. I saw yeah. some of the other rules. Um, uh, show your loyalty and support to the Republic of Slow Jamistan. Show allegiance to the Sultan. Mm -hmm. Never play mumble rap inside the borders. Always eat string cheese the correct way, uh, which is pull the strings, never bite the stick. Throw yes. away the box after I've taken the last donut piece of pizza. Yes. Uh, listen to the Slow Jamistan National Anthem. A what minimum. is this National Anthem? I don't know. Um, There's so I, many I didn't see the Crocs thing, so this is interesting. Oh, that was in my, did I dream it? It was in the Instagram I sent you. Oh, maybe I didn't read that may i or go all the way through or i missed it or something uh-huh so um you're just so exactly by it. and on. yes um we can keep talking i mean why don't we well no that? i think people are going to love the silence of us looking up things on the internet oh, yeah it's going to be exactly what they want to hear so here's what i'm thinking yes uh, it's illegal to wear crocs all right, I think that makes sense. It's the first line in the Instagram post. How did I miss that? I don't know. They have over 500 registered citizens. That's and more good. than 4,500 more have said to have been conditionally approved or waiting in line for citizenship. Mm, well, continue to wait. It's like voting, I mean, I right? Love that he's a uh, sultan. Mm hmm. <laughs> But I mean, I'm telling you, this guy should be our friend. This is the kind of country we would have. Oh, completely. Can you explain exactly what hangover helpers do? Because, I mean, at first blush, it sounds like you guys do exactly what you say you do. <laughs> yeah. But, but And so much more. No, I mean, please. <laughs> um we just want to help people you know be able to host a party at their house without the headache of having to clean up the mess the next day 
um, uh, end goal is to make it, hopefully make their house look like they never had the party. So there's no evidence, there's no, um, you know, there's no mess or, you know, you wake up in the morning, you're like, oh, my house is absolutely trashed. And then it kind of takes away the fun of having the party in the first place. There's half deflated balloons everywhere. Yeah. I feel like there's a lot of champagne circus glasses. Animals. Circus animals, yes. Um, <laughs> champagne glasses with uh, confetti in them, that sort of thing. Goldfish yeah. and also in said what champagne What kind of parties glasses. are you going to, Heidi? Good ones. <laughs> Very good ones. I, clearly. <laughs> I've never seen that. I've never seen goldfish. And, um, okay, but you had to have seen some really good stuff. We have. <laughs> yeah, very interesting things. <laughs> Can you give us any hints? Um, or are you guys bound by... We, uh, we're, we can't give too much away. We see a lot of things that shouldn't be spoken of. We, um, we've, you know, knocked on the door before and had, you know, a, a group of guys from a stag's do. They've got their head, you know, half their head shaved off pubes stuck to their face nice. um you know half naked or dressed up in last night's you know crazy outfits stuff. and things like that um but obviously a lot of the stuff we see we would never um want to you know repeat to. or so, right. kind of, yeah yeah what, um, what we see at the party we leave there you know and so it's there this is such a great idea for a company we come in and make it look like the party never happened. And so that involves yeah. everything, vacuuming, correct, cleaning up. I mean, the fact that like, looking at the website, you guys clean all the glasses and or rent the glasses and then take them away with you. That, if there's one thing I hate, it's hand-washing champagne glasses after a party. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's... we sometimes we are cleaning hundreds of glasses after a party. Um, we take the rubbish away. We you know, we can take eight garbage bags away. Um, that is like includes normal rubbish recycling, you know, anything that's been used at the party. Um, yeah, so we basically remove everything and then give the house a deep clean, um, whether it's inside or outside and yeah, just make it look like a, the pre-party state. So what, not giving anything away that you shouldn't, but can you walk into a house and go, Oh, this party wasn't that great versus oh yeah <laughs> this was a good party yeah and, we what, can, are, and what are the signs of that that are tellable um i mean we we usually find out what type of party it was before we arrive so that we can kind of get an indication of you know from experience what it could look like you know if it's an 18th versus like a 40th or an engagement party versus the hens party like the bachelorette party so um if we walk in and you can tell that late at night people have had like a food fight <laughs> or there's, you know, the cake has been crusted all on the floor. People have tried to eat food late at night. People have oh, yes. tried to cook a, a gourmet <laughs> meal in the middle of the night and we come into the kitchen and there's, you know, pots and pans and food everywhere. Um, you can basically walk in and tell whether people have, been cl like clean throughout the night and you know put their things in the bin and um not throwing things on the floor you know so but uh, it, in saying that we can go in and have an idea in our head and it can be the complete opposite mm. where there's absolutely no way of knowing what it could be that you're walking into and it should be noted and you mark very well on the website things that were once inside somebody's body and have come out at some point during the evening that's their problem, not yours, which I yeah. think is completely reasonable and I completely understandable. And a very all-encompassing statement, by the way, like that is yeah. a, like legal handled that very perfectly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's <is> really anything. <laughs> so yeah. what is the, the hardest of things to get out of, let's say, carpeting? You mentioned cake on the floor. Is it cake? Is it cheese? Yeah, cheese and cake would be the hardest. I mean, not that many houses that we go to have carpet. Like uh, houses do really have carpet, but people might have it in the kitchen area and it's, you know, fully tiled and things. So I haven't had to deal with carpet too much, but definitely, yeah, food crusted into the floor, 
um, it, whether or not it's food, that the floors can often be the hardest thing because, mm. you know, if you had a party of 100 people and that's 100 people walking indoor, outdoor, all night, spilling drinks, you might have to mop the floor like four times to make sure that you're getting it all up. You know, that's multiple different mop attachments that you're using, emptying mm. the bucket multiple times, the, the water will be black that you're pouring out of the bucket. <laughs> Yeah, and I, I also assume too um, that since the people who have hired you know that they do not have to clean it up, like you said, that it might be a little more of a license to be like, yeah, just leave it till later, and that it, you guys yeah. sort of get the the short end of that straw. Yeah, there is there is definitely um, that mindset, but then we also sometimes go in. And the people go, oh, you know, I, I couldn't go to sleep last night before I tidied up. So they, sometimes you do go and it's, it's like they've already done most of it. And, you know, that, that is nice for people to do that. But, you know, we don't mind, We're, like, mm. we all don't mind going in and it being um, trash. Like, it's quite satisfying to, we take before and after photos. So it's quite satisfying to see the process and like the um, end result. So some people, yeah, people apologize and say, oh, you know, we're so sorry. And we got, we've definitely seen worse, you know, mm -hmm. we've it's seen such, everything. So. With those before and after photos, that's got to be so uh, fulfilling. I always talk about like, you know, I, how I wish I had a job that was just like building a table. And at the end of the day, it's like, there's the table. I made that table. You guys have this great, like, here's this room and it no longer looks like this. Um, yeah that's got to be kind of a fulfilling thing where you stand back at the end of the shift or the job and you're just like, all right, I, I think we did okay here. Yeah. It and is how big is the team? Oh, sorry. Um, we have different teams. Everyone works in a team of two. We don't ever send one person to a job. So we have teams throughout Perth and in Melbourne. Um, yeah. We probably have, 20 or so people on um, our teams, but, you know, it's all casual. People can say yes or no. And, um, yeah, depending on what time of year, we're either very busy or, you know, coming into winter now is obviously our quieter season unless people have parties. Mm. Um, but we're constantly growing and having to hire new people to um, keep up with the demand. It seems like this got to be a business that as soon as people find out about it, they go, uh, yes, this is amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, we have to do this. Um, yeah. I, I can think of a few instances where I would have hired you to apologize to the people who hosted me at a party back mm -hmm. in the day. Yeah. Like sort of a, I'm sorry, here you go. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> Please invite me again. Yeah. Has it affected the kind of parties you throw now? Um, I did have an engagement party uh, a year and a half ago. And I, you know, in my mind, oh, you know, it'll be fine. I, I'll, I won't drink too much. I'll, you know, I'm a hangover helper. I'll be absolutely fine. I woke <laughs> up in the morning and had the biggest regrets um, <laughs> of not getting someone to come and then me having to do it because, you know, we're hired furniture and plasters and things that needed to be picked up so we you know my fiance and I had to get up in the morning and clean it ourselves and it was yeah I had huge regrets the next morning so um in the future I would definitely be getting someone to come to my own house I feel like your colleagues should have gifted you that like in, in if they were real friends yeah right yeah good point I would do that I mean a few you. of them were at the party so you know you don't want to really mm. do that when you come over anyway so that should have been like a group effort. <laughs> Are the people who you've worked with, the, the various hangover helpers, uh, especially in this instance at the engagement party, are they a little better guests because they know whatever they do has to be undone by somebody or do they just not give a crap and someone's sliding down the banister and <laughs> the rest of it? I feel like most people at the start of the night are good guests and then it's when you've had a few too many and everything goes out the window, you know? Mm, I mean, I'm probably, yeah. that, I'm probably that person as well. After a certain point, you don't think about that and you don't um, <laughs> don't care so much later in the night or early in the morning. Um, but yeah, most people that I know would be respectful, you would hope. 
You would hope. Yeah. You know, you always see in movies the, I, I feel like this is like a John Hughes movie kind of like <laughs> trope that as mom and dad are turning the key in the front door, the cleaning people are in the back, leaving them through the back door, closing the door, taking the last bag of trash with them. Is this a just everyday occurrence for you now? I've never personally had that happen with the teenagers. And oh, okay. The so, home. yeah. Um, I've definitely cleaned up, you know, parties for 18 year olds and things, but it wasn't a sneaking around kind of um, situation. Yeah, I guess if you are conscious enough to hire somebody to come clean up your mess, you're probably conscious enough to not leave it to the last minute, I guess is what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Well, I, I mean, I have a very small, very small cross section of hanging out with Australians when I was 18. I feel like... Very small? Let's just say small. It's small. <laughs> I mean, there was a lot. I would had a very good time. Very good time. But I feel like in America, we're more likely to have to do the John Hughes, hide it from the parents. Mm. Heaven forbid we threw a party. Like all of my friends in Australia, it was cool. Sometimes parents were there, sometimes they weren't, but everyone knew we were having the party. So we didn't have to hide it. We had to clean it up, but there was no mm. mad dash to, you know, pretend it never happened. Yeah, I think, yeah, I'm, I'm actually from New Zealand, but, you know, New Zealand, Australia is quite similar. Um, the drinking culture is definitely, I lived, I've lived in America as well, and the drinking cultures are very, very different. Obviously, we can drink a lot younger over here. Um, so you can be having an 18th and your parents are fine with it, whereas I guess America, you're sneaking around a little bit more because Scandalous. of the drinking age. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. Yes. Does that uh, drinking age restriction affect how terrible the cleanup is afterwards? Do you think? Have you seen? I mean, obviously, you're not, you didn't come to America just to clean up after other people. <laughs> At least I hope us. not. I hope you came to enjoy <laughs> whatever it is we yeah. have here that's enjoyable. Um, yeah, I don't know. I feel like 18 year olds are definitely messier than like 21 year olds, like yeah. the maturity level um I mean yeah some of the worst parties I've been to with you can tell that you know no one's put a single can in the bin all night has been an 18 party <laughs> but that was you know at the parents house and they had hosted and they had organized for us to come but it was just like disgusting yeah do you do bigger parties office parties that kind of thing or do you only do home parties we definitely do uh, event spaces and offices and um, basically anywhere where you could throw a party that needs to be cleaned. But the majority of our work is in homes um, you know, because event spaces and um, pool, you know, places that you can have a party usually will involve paying for the clean anyway. So that's a part mm. of the package. Um, but we, yeah, we do do that, but I'd say like 95% of our, cleans uh, people's homes okay let me rephrase this another way who's harder to clean up after government officials or 18 year olds 18 year olds okay just just wanted to check um this is so interesting i'm just so fascinated by this and you guys used to i guess another thing we lost because of covid was you guys used to bring breakfast yeah i mean that's wow. amazing that's it is that's one of the big losses, I feel like. Yeah. I mean, we still bring drinks, you know, um, Gatorade, water. <laughs> yeah, get the electrolytes. Yes. Yeah. And that people really appreciate that. But now I think also because Uber Eats is such a bigger thing, whereas years ago it wasn't, people were just ordering Uber Eats to their homes. So they kind of still get, you know, they no effort, they have food sure. coming. Whereas, you know, seven years ago in Perth, Uber Eats just wasn't that um it wasn't around so much so it's not missed as much I think some people still wish we did but yeah we don't do that mm -hmm. but you do it, one of the options is you do also provide bartenders if right. folks want we can yeah we can um we can help them on the Saturday night we can help them have the hangovers and then we come the next morning and 
help with the aftermath. <laughs> Do the bartenders then become the cleaners or is this two different groups of people? It can be the same. We've had times where it's the same, you know, they might finish at midnight and then they'll go back at 9am to do the clean. But the good thing about being there on the Saturday night is that this, the bar staff can actually clean throughout the night. So right, there's, as you go. Yeah, clean as you go. So it's not as bad the next morning, but you don't know what's going to happen from midnight to when the party <laughs> actually but finishes. This, yeah, it should almost this, be worse. Like you keep clean say, all night and then you leave your post for like a quick nap before you come back. And it's like, what the hell? Godzilla showed up. <laughs> <laughs> I would just feel like that almost a the worst possible walk of shame like i left you guys here five hours ago and this is what you've done with the place like <laughs> i've seen you both you know in in full uh celebration mode and then also the regret mode the next morning that's got to be a, not a lot of eye contact is probably made during that second half of those, that's uh, true. those events yeah yeah we often don't see the hosts for very long you know they might answer the door and then go back to their bedroom and then we don't see them and we just tell them that we're leaving some people aren't you know well enough to be up and about um sometimes we even get emails and text messages that on the night saying oh you know our back gate will be open and the back sliding door will be open and we don't see anyone at all so um <laughs> that's hilarious sometimes the people are up and they're trying to help other times they're not and like that's completely fine i often don't get out of bed for, you know when i'm hungover so it's completely understandable yeah. that's why we're there is that they wake up in the afternoon and they go oh my house is clean it's amazing you have to be like the best people at just like no judgment everything's great i'm not going to laugh at you just focus and take yeah. it'd be hard it's got to so, be, yeah. You got to have a certain I'd level so of patience. Because I'm so like, tell me the stories. What happened? Right. Exactly what we did. Exactly how right, we opened yes. up. Tell us everything. Yeah, we, I do love seeing the um, the homeowner and asking stories and hearing the stories. That is very entertaining. Often there's parties where there's Polaroid cameras and things like that, and then you get oh, to see people have left them all lying around, and you get to see the photos from the night. So that's very um, funny to look at as well. That's your tip right there. Yes. That's amazing. Perfect. So this is great. And I mean, like you said, it, it's expanding and more people are using your services. This makes all the sense in the world. And when is this um, coming to other continents? Right. All right, let uh, me rephrase that. When are you coming to Detroit? Yes. Because clearly I can keep clearly. you in business single-handedly. Yeah. <laughs> It's definitely something that could um, be used worldwide. We're definitely expanding within Australia first to all um, areas in Australia. We we get phone calls from other um, states and unfortunately we're not there at the moment, so we can't help. Um, but yeah, definitely focus on Australia first and then I would love to expand further. I know a bunch of wild septuagenarians that'll keep you busy in South Australia. So <laughs> <laughs> once you get there, I could get you all set. <laughs> and they can party like the best of us. <laughs> For more information on Hangover Helpers, check out their website, hangoverhelpers.com.au. They are also on Facebook, where they're at facebook.com slash hangoverhelpers.com.au. And they are on Instagram, where they are at hangoverhelpers. Why the Podcast is produced by the Professional Production Company. Please be sure to rate and review us on Apple Podcasts, because we're shallow and need constant validation. For more information, you can check out our website, whythepodcast.com. And like everyone else, we're on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Today's show was recorded and produced by Heidi Hegquist and myself from our world headquarters, located on the second floor of the professional office building, centrally located downtown. Our reluctant executive producers are John Sauve and Sandy Stone. Our willing producers are Rachel Allen and Randy Jeanette. Our intern is Zach Jackson. This one's for Philippe. Thanks for joining us. Flash, we're coming home.
Nigel, is that you? Are you here? Nigel, 